Vancouver. We're talking about privacy or lack thereof in the pandemic age. Many of us are on our phones a lot more than we usually are. That means a lot of data usage and a lot of data being shared. We're going to bring in our next guest right now. Sharon Polsky is the president of the Privacy and Access Council of Canada. Sharon, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's wonderful to be with you. Now, you're in Calgary. You obviously have some concerns based on a recent initiative that Jason Kenney, the premier there, uh, mentioned about using cell phones uh, for quarantine data. And that raises a lot of uh, rather scary privacy questions. Uh, why don't you uh, fill us in on that? Well, you're right. It really, really does. Because if you think of it, the technology is already out there. We all carry our cell phones. It's convenient. It's great for mom and dad to be able to keep track of their kids and make sure they get home at the end of school days when we used to have school days. Uh, but now the governments across Canada, across all sorts of democratic nations, the very same governments that looked to China and said how horrible it was that they were tracking their people using cell phone technology, using digital ankle bracelets in other Asian countries, all of a sudden it's okay to do it here. And when you think of it, our Prime Minister recently said several times, quote, there is nothing we won't do to keep Canadians safe. Uh, they're throwing millions of dollars at increasing surveillance. Of course, it's nice to be able to think that it's health-related surveillance, which is a separate defined category, but they don't say that it's going to be limited to that. So if you think of it, they're going to ask people or tell people or push the app onto your phone, three very different scenarios, but either way, it doesn't matter because unless there is pervasive testing to see who already has had COVID virus and has an immunity, what information will they really be able to gain from it except who's been close to who? Now, under the Charter of Rights, mm -hmm. we have a, a right to freedom of association. Sort of flies in the face of that. It's pretty staggering when you look at it. And this is like worldwide. We see CCTV cameras, uh, crowd monitoring devices, drones and things like that. Uh, it's already taken off in various uh, parts of the world. But I think you see the rationale behind security, but you also are urging the governments to be transparent. Well, that's a big part of the problem. Uh, right after 9-11, we were all told how important it was and how righteous it was and proper to give up a little, bit, a little bit of our privacy for security and a little bit more for security. The promise of security, of course, really hasn't come to pass. Yet somehow now it's patriotic to give up our privacy for the greater good, for because we're all in this together. and. Where does it end? I mean, I looked to Singapore that was being applauded for their tracking, their di digital technological tracking of COVID uh, contagion. Mm -hmm. And now the very director of that program says he doesn't see any development, any technological uh, technique in the world that actually is worthwhile for contact tracing. He says manual, phoning people, asking where they are, because there's too many false negatives, too many false positives, too many people who don't even exhibit symptoms. So why would they even sign up to say, I might have it? Okay, as we wrap this up, I just want to look past the pandemic. Once this actually is over and the enhanced monitoring is still in effect, it's very hard for governments to scale back these kind of things once they are implemented, correct? You're very, very right. I mean, in Vancouver, after the Olympics, you've got thousands of cameras. Toronto has thousands of cameras. Calgary, every major city has thousands of cameras on the street, whether it's for public safety or for whatever rationale of the moment, and it's legitimate. But then it's so easy to say, we've got this technology in place. We might be able to use it. What if it's good for something else? And without the transparency, without knowing exactly who is collecting what information for what precise purpose, who's getting access to it, mm -hmm. without that, that level of um, clarity, it's the governments don't earn trust, and that's a problem for them. So I would urge them to be completely transparent with what they're doing. Fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for shedding light on this complex issue, Sharon. My pleasure. All right. We'll talk